The difference between this league and our team is we got Derrick Henry. Okay? Congratulations, man. Play with confidence. We block him on goal. This week's Titans All Access is fit for a king. Give it to Henry, 25-20, 15, outside to the 10, puts a move on to the five, stiff arm dives over the pylon. That was a man-sized run by the man. That's what I'm talking about. Hear what it's like to run for more than 200 yards as Derrick Henry becomes the franchise's total touchdown leader. Number 75 for the king. Plus, quarterback Ryan Tannehill's leadership has grown since taking over in 2019. Hear from number 17 in a special two-part Nissan Insider. And the Titans face a tough challenge on Sunday Night Football against the Kansas City Chiefs. Hear from General Manager John Robinson on what it's going to take to get the job done. Take advantage of opportunity, man, right now. The franchise record for touchdowns for the King. Mitchell had the hit, and the Titans have recovered. Zach Jeffrey Simmons, touchdown, tight. How about a little finger roll? It's intercepted, Andrew Adams. Intercepted, Fulton with the interception. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and the home of the AFC South leading Tennessee Titans. Welcome to Titans All Access. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and that is indeed the truth. The Tennessee Titans are 3-0 in AFC South games, 5-2 overall, and headed for a big-time showdown Sunday night football in Kansas City. But first, Amy, we have to hit on the historic win over the Texans. Mike, I think historic is the best word for it. What with Derrick Henry doing what he did, another 200-yard rushing game, another two touchdowns against the Texans, and, you know, he set a couple records. Well, the record that he really set, the organization's career record for touchdowns scored with 75, passing Eddie George, who had a very nice message for him after the game. Best of all for us, the king was wired for sound, so without further ado... Here's the record setter, Derrick Henry. Give it to Henry on the left side to the 30, to the 35, to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, to the 35, and he is tackled inside the 35-yard line by Nelson. Oh, Malik. The tackle. Give him vertical. They got him to stop their feet. <laughs> Opportunity, man, right now. Don't think too much. Don't get far too ahead of yourself. One play at a time, bro. Play with confidence. We block him on goal. Give it to Henry. 25 20, 15. Outside to the 10. Puts a move on to the 5. Stiff arm dives over the pylon. That was a man sized run by D Man. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. What's up? Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? We all got each other. I got y'all back, y'all got my back. I'm proud to be y'all teammate. We family, bro. Willis. Yeah, Henry goes in standing up. Touchdown, Titans! The franchise record for touchdowns. Number 75 for the King. And Tennessee has surged 10 in front. There we go. What's up, bro? I appreciate y'all. Real talk. Real talk, bro. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all, bro. Appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate y'all. Staying tall through adversity. Every time, bro. That's what we do. We stick together, bro, for sure. We learn and keep growing, bro. Keep grinding. What hey, a kind of time, bro. Big dog. Hey, keep, hey, keep running that thing, bro. So, man. In the future, bro. Keep doing your shit, bro. Appreciate I love the way you run. For real. Keep doing your shit. Hello. For sure. Hello, bro. I, I, see, I see you in a couple weeks. That was awesome. 
It was. But you know what else is awesome? What? The Titans' defensive performance against the Texans' rookie running back. Ah, yes. The Titans stymied it, Damian Pierce. So guess what we got? What? Dave McGinnis, beneath the surface, looking at the run games of both teams on Sunday in Houston. Hey guys, Coach Mack here with this week's Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface, beginning now. Today we're going to look at the run game from both the Titans and the Texans. Texans are in 21 personnel. The Titans are in a five-man front with a two-high look in the back end. Jeffrey Simmons is on the three technique on the right side. He just forklifts the left guard into Pierce, the running back, and essentially makes the tackle with Kenyon Green's backside. Total physical domination in the run game. This was to continue all day for the Titans against the running attack of the Houston Texans. Titans are in 12 personnel, three by one initially. Texans are in an eight-man front as they were the entire afternoon trying to stop Derrick Henry. Number two, Woods goes in motion. Number 85, Chig comes across in a nice crunch block. Excellent block back by Jones on the shade. Davis, nice combo up to the second level. Henry has excellent vision. On the rollback, makes number 32 miss. Classic stiff arm on number 36. And is caught initially in the secondary by Nelson for a 41-yard gain. 11 personnel, tight end number 81, Hooper goes in motion to form two by two. Henry offset to the running back's right side, inside zone handoff, read option look, holds the defensive end. Malik Willis makes the proper read as a quarterback off of number 97, gives it to Henry. Excellent blocks by Brewer, Petit Ferrer on the second level linebacker. Henry runs through the arm tackle of number 97, makes a tremendous okie doke move on the safety, and then excellent blocks downfield by Conley and Westbrook Akine, and then classic Derrick Henry stiff arm and one of the better touchdown runs you're going to see by Derrick Henry for six points. Titans on a four-man front with two high safeties, outside zone to the close side. Watch Bud Dupree and Kevin Strong build a solid wall on the front side, and Big Jeff, now playing a shade technique, completely destroys the down block by number 64, gets four and a half yards deep in the backfield. Running back tries reverse field. Bad, bad decision. David Long cleans it up for a seven-yard loss. Again, Titans were dominating on defense against the run game all afternoon. This TD is number 75 for Derrick Henry, setting a Oilers-Titans record, passing Eddie George for the all-time TD record. Number 75 is in. Dylan Radins is an extra tight end on goal line offense. Texans are in an all-up defensive front on the goal line. Swain goes in motion. This is total domination by the entire Titans offensive front for this record-setting touchdown. Look and see Toro in the end zone in a spacesuit, saying, Houston, we have a problem. Still to come on Titans All Access, I'm talking ball with Titans General Manager John Robinson. That's nice, but I'm talking with quarterback Ryan Tannehill, and we're talking about his leadership style, so stick around for that. How do you get to do that? No, don't worry about it, Mike. Welcome back to the Bet MGM Studio and Titans All Access. Since Ryan Tannehill took over as the Titans starting quarterback in October of 2019, a lot of things have stuck out. One thing in particular, his leadership skills. My partner Amy Wells had a chance to sit down with Ryan Tannehill to talk about leadership, among other things, in part one of this week's Nissan Insider. So Ryan, I saw you in the game against Washington and you were hit a lot. That's just kind of what happened that game. But I was struck by the fact that I've seen other quarterbacks having a similar type of day start to get pretty frustrated and get really angry either with themselves or with their teammates. That never happened for you. You were always positive. You were always encouraging the other guys on the sideline. Is that something that you've had to work at as a leader or is that just kind of your disposition as a player, as a person, as a leader? I think it's just knowing who you're working with, right? Some guys, they respond better to you kind of getting on them and, and being kind of hard on them. And some guys don't respond to that well at all. They'll actually shut down and go the other way. So just knowing who you're working with and, and how guys respond and, and what they need. Is that a skill set that you've had to work on over your career? Yeah, no doubt. It's something that, you know, you're constantly working to, to build those relationships. Um, you know, grow as a leader in, in everything you do. And, and part of that is building those relationships, understanding guys and, 
and how they function, what makes them tick, how they respond to certain types of coaching or, uh, or encouragement or praise, and uh, just using that to help motivate. You also have to have an understanding of the guys you're playing with, how they respond best to different coaching or conversations. You have to have an understanding of the circumstances this team is experiencing as a whole. That's a lot mentally to have on your plate. How do you balance all of that? Uh, there's a lot that goes into it. You know, it's uh, something that it's gotten a little bit easier over time. You know, just being in a lot of different situations over the course of 11 years now, uh, experiencing a lot of different coaches, a lot of different players, situations. And um, so at this point in my career, it's like, you know, not too much is new in that regard. You know, obviously new people, but just as far as situations and, and things you go through over the course of the season, I've been through most, most things so far at this point. So uh, you learn from all those experiences you had in the past and you're able to, to use that, that learning experience and the next time it comes up, you know how to handle it. You mentioned you're in year 11. Not only does that make you one of the veteran guys on the team, it makes you one of the older guys in the room, just in the locker room. Um, does that help you at all, being a leadership position, being an older guy? Maybe it does. I still feel young, though. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm, I'm probably one of the older guys in the locker room, but I feel young. Uh, most days, that is. Um, you know, I still love coming to work. I love being around uh, the guys in, in the locker room and, and all the different personalities and everything that, that goes along with it. So, um, yeah, maybe one of the older guys, but I still feel young, and, and no doubt they keep me young. November football is just different. When Titans All Access returns, Amy Wells talks with Ryan Tannehill about that and a lot more. Stay tuned, it's next. As we continue Titans All Access, we move to the Hughes and Coleman decision of the week, which I chose because I wanted to talk about the decision to select Malik Willis in the third round of the 2022 NFL Draft. Shocked people. John Robinson trading up to number 86 to take the young man, and he has been really something since he came in here six months ago. He absolutely has. He has really been determined to learn this role, learn it the correct way, and we've seen marked improvement from rookie minicamp and OTAs to getting the start finally as a professional quarterback. So I think we've seen him grow, and I think that he has really invested in this team in doing it the correct way, and you've gotta like that. One of the reasons John Robinson took Malik Willis is because he wanted him to learn under Ryan Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill is that veteran presence. And as you sat down and talked to him and got into a variety of things, what you learned from your talk with Tannehill that maybe we didn't know? I was just blown away by the amount of poise that he has and the amount of comfort that he has here with the Tennessee Titans organization. This is truly his home. This is his place where he feels very comfortable. And I think he has brought all of the experiences from his entire career in the National Football League, and it's made him the player that he is today. And I'm very glad that the Titans are reaping the benefits of that. Yeah, he's a guy who's 36 and 18 as the Titans starting quarterback. And as the weather gets cooler, it seems like Ryan Tannehill gets better. He's ready for November football, as he mentions in part two of our Nissan Insider. As we approach the change in seasons, is there a change in football as well? November, December time. Does the actual football that you're experiencing on the field change a little bit? Maybe a little bit, you know, slow, kind of as a slow, gradual thing as the season goes on. You know, I think as you've seen like teams that can play physical football into January, late late in the season, into the playoffs uh, and run the ball well and play physical defense, uh, typically over the course of history have, have done done well, you know, as the season goes on, goes on. Do you have to adjust the way that you prepare throughout the week to accommodate for maybe more physical games on Sundays? I mean, you, as the season goes on, just more things come up with your body, right? You're dealing with with more things, the things can kind of start to stack up if you let them. So you want to make sure you're staying on top of your recovery, staying on top of, of any treatment, any injuries that pop up throughout the season. It's, it's pretty much constantly something. So um, just being able to heal from those things. On a national level, the conversation around Ryan Tannehill this year has been more and more about the swag that you seem to have this year. Is that a confidence maybe that people are seeing? Or is there something extra going on in Ryan Tannehill in season 11? Yeah, you know, I'm confident in, in my, my abilities, confident in the guys around me, 
And that allows you to go play confidently is when you believe the guys around you are gonna be doing their job, uh, whether it's getting open or, or blocking in front of you, whatever the case may be. When you trust the guys around you, you're able to go out and have fun and, and play loose. And I think when we all can do that collectively, that's when we're at our best. It seems like this locker room is incredibly close. The culture here seems to be the strongest that I've personally seen it in a very long time. Yeah, no doubt. It's something we put a lot of thought and attention into. And, you know, as the season goes on, it, it just intensifies, right? You get closer, you go through these experiences, those, those situations where, you know, you're in an emotional situation, it's high stress situation, and you're able to collectively as a group come away with a win. It just brings you uh, so much closer together. So you start stacking those things up over the course of a season. And um, yeah, no doubt about it, it really brings the locker room together. Does it help that you seem to be so calm and even keeled throughout the highs and lows of not just a game, but a season as a whole? I try to be, you know, I try to be consistent each and every day, you know, coming in, whether we're coming off a great game or, or a tough game, uh, just coming in, um, trying to push myself, push the guys around me, make the corrections and, and get ready to go each and every week. Cause it doesn't matter what you did last week. It's all about what you're going to do this week. That's a great job with that Ryan Tannehill interview. You know, he's an easy guy to talk to. He's a very cool dude. So because you've been on for two segments by yourself, it's just me in the next segment. Oh, really? No, it's just that worked out. <laughs> John Robinson's talking ball next on Titans All Access. It's time for Talking Ball with John Robinson, presented by Duncan on Titans All Access. We spent a lot of time on this show talking about Derrick Henry and another 200-yard rushing performance, and we should. But right now, let's talk offensive line and what a challenge it's been. Two new starters from last year. After two games, a new left tackle. Nate Davis misses two games. This group has had to sort of battle to put it all together, but they certainly have battled, and the run blocking was outstanding in Houston. What jumped out on the tape? Yeah, I mean, I think all of those guys, they've really worked hard. Um, that position group specifically takes time to, for those guys to kind of gel together. Um, the offensive line coaches, Keith Carter, Sully Haas, they've all worked with those guys. They've worked with them after practice on the techniques that we teach. Uh, but I thought those guys played really hard in that game. I'm really proud of the strides that they made. And we're going to need those guys to continue to kind of come together as we go down the stretch here. You were pleased with your draft class back during the spring. You expected them to contribute. Did you expect them to contribute as much as they have, not even halfway through the season? Yeah, those guys have all made strides at their own individual positions and gotten better. Uh, some have played more than others. Some have been really good on special teams for us. Um, but it takes some time for those guys to kind of acclimate themselves to our culture, uh, stylistically, the way that we want to play football. Uh, but I'm really proud of the strides that they've made, and uh, hopefully they can continue to build on those uh, as we go through the season here. Titans have always been known for run defense. In the game against the Giants, not so good. Since then, seemingly better week by week. What's keyed it? Well, I think that, you know, that was a priority for us after that game. You know, that's something that we really wanted to hang our hat on. Uh, was to be strong against the run. You know, it starts up front with the line and the linebackers. You know, those guys getting knocked back at the line of scrimmage, keying on the blocks, the linebackers, you know, seeing it triggering quickly, which we certainly saw this past weekend. Um, it's gotten better week after week uh, and it continues to be a priority for us. Sunday night football, Titans taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. They are five and two. Anything different about the Chiefs from years past? Yeah, I mean, the staff is intact. Mahomes is still back there. It's an explosive offense. Uh, they've still got Kelsey. The line is intact. Uh, they've added some weapons in uh, Juju Smith-Schuster and Valdez Scantling in the offseason. Uh, they've acclimated to that offense pretty well. It's still a pretty, you know, the same tandem of backs with McKinnon, Edwards, Hilaire. Uh, the rookie Pacheco is running really good for him as well. Uh, defensively, it's an attacking front, you know, with Chris Jones, who's a perennial Pro Bowl player in the middle. The two backers, Gay and Bolton, are playing really well. And they've got some experience in the secondary. They picked up Justin Reed uh, in free agency from the Houston Texans, who we know. Um, and Juan Thornhill returns back there. So experience on defense and really explosive on offense. Thanks for talking ball. Always enjoy it, Mike. Presented by Duncan every week, John Robinson on Titans All Access. When we come back, we've got your Titans game ticket as Amy Wells returns. Stay tuned. Titans fans, are you ready for Sunday night football? Woo! Yes, Sunday night football. 
Titans headed to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. 720 Central Time kick. It's time for your Titans game ticket to get you ready. Are you ready, Amy? Oh, Mike Keith, I'm fired up. And just like in last week's show, I've got to start this week with an alert. An alert. Yep, an alert. Because kickoff for Sunday night's game is not at noon. Instead, the Titans and Chiefs are part of NBC's Sunday night football and thus the game will kick off at 7 20 p.m. Only makes sense that Sunday night football would be on Sunday night. I just want to make sure it's crystal clear. Not at noon, 7 20 p.m. The Chiefs are leading the AFC West with a 5 and 2 record. Quarterback Patrick Mahomes is still doing Patrick Mahomes things. He's thrown 176 times for 2,159 yards, 20 touchdowns, and five interceptions. And he's got a ton of weapons, including tight end Travis Kelsey, who has almost 600 yards and seven touchdowns in 2022 alone. Running back Clyde edwards Lair has six touchdowns, three rushing and three receiving. And on defense, the Chiefs have tallied 508 total tackles, 19 sacks, 29 tackles for loss, three interceptions, and five fumble recoveries. Big challenge for the Titans. Sunday night football from Kansas City, again for the third time in this segment. Sunday night. Yes, Sunday night. 720 Central Time kick. Titans Radio is on the air with this young lady, Amy Wells, and her partner, Rhett Bryan. Six o'clock Central Time, Titans Countdown on Titans radio stations throughout the region. There are 50 of them. Surely you can find one to tune in. We hope you will. Big game, the biggest game of the week. The Titans are involved, and we'll talk all about it next week on Titans All Access. But for now, we are done. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.